Twisted World of Sports Thursday night. It's a party on a Thursday night. How excited are we all? I'm pretty excited. Let us look up on a Thursday night. Let's do it. Let's keep it. Let's keep it going. Every year. I mean, it makes sense, right? It makes perfect sense. Why try and compete with the other footy codes in Australia when you know you're probably not going to be able to do it? Let's be honest. I love my rugby, but let's be completely honest. Rugby League and the Aussie Rules, they are the sports here in Australia. So Thursday night, it's a little bit different for a Bledisloe Cup, but it feels great. It feels perfect, actually. What else were we going to do tonight? Who's your caddy? Ahoy there, mate. Welcome along. Brody Holly, ahoy. Gotcha, girl. Ahoy. Andrew O'Grady, top of the leaderboard there, mate. Andrew O'Grady, top of the leaderboard. Still. Just look at that. Andrew O'Grady, since the leaderboard has gone into place, has spent 9.25 hours of his life hanging out with us idiots here at the Wasted World of Sports. I'll drink to that. Have we decided that I'll drink to that is definitely going to be on a shirt? I feel like it should be. I say it a lot lately. Mr. Ed's dead in second place. Biggie Shack rounding out the top three. Dustin Fisher in the top four. Oh, God. So we've got Cowboys in the top four in the squad leaderboard as well. Unbelievable scenes. <laughs> uh, excuse me, gotcha girl. If you ever made merch, I'm definitely buying it. I've had merch for about five years, okay? Not on this channel, obviously. This channel this channel's new. But I'm saying there's been many an Intoxigamer t-shirt. The viewer. Ahoy there, mate. NRL bro. Sorry, Twitch. NRL Brody. Ahoy there, mate. How are you going? Thanks for coming along and hanging out with me tonight here. Bledisloe Cup. Don't forget, if you can't see the game, obviously I can't broadcast it on live stream, but I can share my screen on Discord. So if you would like to uh, see what I'm seeing, and I know a lot of you probably do, uh, do feel free to join the Wasted World of Sports Discord channel. And you can patch into the gameplay as well. You can see through my eyes, basically. Not really. That's not how it works at all. All right. Um, I'll, we'll talk about it after, Gotcha Girl. I'll send you, like, uh, well, links and stuff to... Yes, but there has been Intoxigamer shirts for quite some time. But anyway, let's talk a little bit about this game, shall we? 20 years is an extremely long time. 20 years... It has been since the Wallabies last held the Bledisloe Cup. I shared an interesting thing on Facebook earlier today, you know. Uh, the Wallabies last held the Bledisloe Cup in 2002. Facebook was around in 2004, and I think Twitter was like 2006 or something like that. So there has never, ever been one single Facebook post or tweet about the Wallabies winning the Bledisloe Cup. Crazy, right? 20 years is a long time for domination in sports. And just think after tonight, because I believe... Is it a two-game series or a three-game series? Not sure about that. But anyways, you get the feeling the Wallabies need to win the first one. If they're going to be any threat to the Bledisloe Cup, if it's a two-game series this year, then absolutely they have to. It's non-negotiable. If it's a three-game series, then they are at least uh, in with a chance. Oi. A sellout 
Now, this is the reason why it was moved to a Thursday night, because the game is sold out. None of us could have predicted that Melbourne were going to get knocked out. God, I think... Thank you. The guy on the couch. Ah. Oh. Why am I bowing to you? I'll drink to you instead. I will drink to that instead. How about that? I'll drink to that. I think Marika Corombete is uh, a little bit meh as well, especially when playing the All Blacks. He does not have the... Uh, he doesn't have the impact that he does against other teams. The All Blacks have a way of shutting him down. I can only remember one really big bulldozing run. <laughs> I think it was poor old Bowden Barrett. I think poor Bowden Barrett got absolutely steamrolled in that Perth demolition job that year. It was a few years ago now. I think it was Coram Bete, wasn't it? Just absolutely steamrolled Bowden Barrett, who was playing fullback that night. Uh, the All Blacks were down a man, possibly even two at the time, but they got a red card pretty early on, and... Uh, Australia went on to win quite comfortably. And I remember all the headlines were like, demolition job in Perth. It's like, yeah, well, yes, okay. Demolition job, uh, 15 on 14. Yes, they won comfortably that night. But, I mean, it's hardly a demolition job when you're playing with an extra man. But anyways, I digress. That was a long time ago. I'm over it, I swear. And I think the All Blacks still won the, the Bledisloe Cup that year anyway, so. <laughs> Waltzing Matilda has to be the single worst. Let me think about that. Yes, I think Waltzing Matilda is probably the single worst uh, song to perform before a sporting contest. And then they sort of took it next level, didn't they? They got... Um, they went through that era of bringing John Williamson out to actually perform it. Interesting little nugget of knowledge here from Tim Horan. It takes 32 beer stubbies to fill the Bledisloe Cup. So anyway, some interesting things to discuss tonight before the game starts. Most notably, the recall of Bernard Foley. I don't know what the hell David Rennie's on, but I'd like some. Maybe. Actually, maybe not, because it makes you make terrible decisions. Far see. Ahoy there, mate. So whatever David Rennie's on, I may or may not want some. I'm not sure. But the recall of Bernard Foley. I understand there's injuries. I get it. There's injuries. But Bernard Foley, really? <laughs> really? We're recalling Bernard Foley for the Bledisloe Cup. Good luck with that. I most certainly will not. Drink to that decision. Well, actually, I will, because I'm going for the All Blacks. <laughs> Great news for All Blacks supporters everywhere. Bernard Foley. Stick to what you're on, Mr. Intox. I'll drink to that. There are the All Blacks, 1 through 15. Ethan DeGroote, Samasoni, Takioho. Oh, God damn it, I can't say his name. Tyrrell Lomax, Brody Retallick, Big Bad Brody. Nagus Mika, go the All Blacks. Yes, here they come out onto the field. But of course, it's not kickoff time yet. There's still anthems and the haka to go through. So if you don't have access to the game tonight, there is still time to jump onto the Discord server. The link is in the chat rooms. All the chat rooms. And you can see the game through my eyes. 
sharing my screen on Discord. So for those who don't have access to it, you can check it out. Because sometimes, sometimes, I'm a bit of a nice guy and I like to share my things. Sometimes. Just don't get on the wrong side of me. Get on the wrong side of me, I'll block you from everything. <laughs> I, I officially have no idea what I'm on about tonight. Oh, this is going to be great. Uh, the mental one is so mental that she doesn't like rugby union. Can you believe? Moas Bus, ahoy! 11.45 in the Republic, and it is on. Oh, yes. I, You know what? I actually thought that Australia had a little bit of a chance this year. The, you know, think about it. The All Blacks are kind of vulnerable. They're, they're experimenting. They're rebuilding towards the World Cup. They're vulnerable. They've lost a lot of games. They've lost series that they've never lost before. They slipped at one point down to an all-time low in the world rankings. They were vulnerable. I just get the feeling that this team that the Wallabies have picked, injuries, I get it. I understand that David Rennie was hamstrung a little bit with injuries, but Bernard Foley. Come on. Honestly, we're <laughs> in 2022, Australia are still picking Bernard Foley. Tate McDermott, Tate McDermott's another one. Why is Tate McDermott? In my opinion, in my honest opinion, Tate McDermott is probably the best scrum half in Australia at the moment, certainly throughout uh, Super Rugby Pacific anyway. What does that guy have to do to get a run ahead of Nick White, the fairy diver? Uh, George, George, George sucks off James. Well, I don't need to be involved in what goes on in George and Jeff's private time, but they ask, is anyone's Sky Sports crapping out? Uh, well, I'm actually, I'm in Australia, so I'm watching on Stan Sport. So I don't have any issues. Is that guy's name Tony Garvey or is that just a, a is that the brand of jumper that he's wearing? Bring back Adam Ashley Cooper. Bring back Adam Ashley Cooper and his uh, eyeliner. Yeah, actually, uh, no. I was going to say for a moment there, Adam Ashley Cooper, the only rugby player that you will ever see running out wearing eyeliner like he's the goddamn lead singer of Panic at the Disco or something. But no, that's not the case, is it? I'm pretty sure Martin Nonu used to wear some... <laughs> <laughs> Look, there's nothing wrong with eyeliner. I went through my eyeliner phase as well. That's quite... There's many an Intoxigamer stream where I'm just like... With the eyeliner. It's just unusual to wear it on the rugby paddock. That's all I'm saying. Very unusual. I like how they, they say... Stand if you're able now. In recent years, stand if you're able to. I was actually at a. Um, uh, I'm pretty sure it was Disturbed, the the band Disturbed. If anyone knows them, uh, the lead singer was actually like, uh, he's got this really weird thing where it's like, 
he feels personally offended if you're not standing up, getting in, like, on your feet, getting into the show. He actually had a go at somebody in the crowd, like, you know, really had a, a good and proper go at them. Get up, you know, get on your feet. I'm up here working my butt off, sweating up here on the stage. You get up. And it turned out the whole while that it was a disabled person in a wheelchair. And she could not stand up. Whoops, I've bumped the microphone. She could not stand up. It wasn't physically possible. But any, anyways, it just sort of reminded me of... I, I can't help but notice now, ever since that particular gig, they always say now, stand if you're able to. Kurtley Beale is still around. He was selected, if I'm not mistaken, in... Um, was he selected in the Springboks games or the Argentina games? I'm pretty sure Kurtley Beale is, uh, has still been around lately. I wonder what version of the Haka they're going to pull out tonight. I feel like it'll probably be the, just the standard Haka because doesn't Rugby Australia have a problem with the the new one? Well, it's not new anymore, is it? The player created one from recent years. <clears throat> I've always said like the um Kapo Ongo, that's that's what it's called, isn't it? I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. UFC only fans, ahoy. Um, I was just telling everybody about this time that I met Pat. <laughs> no, actually, that's not what I was telling. I wasn't telling that story at all. Yes, Kurtley Beale was in the team last game. I thought so. He's probably injured again. I mean, he was made of matchsticks anyway at the height of his career, let alone now when it's surely winding down. Surely, Kurtley Beale's career is winding down. Good Lord, what the hell am I looking at? Sorry, that's actually really mean and nasty. But did you did you see that guy? It's like he doesn't quite know what style he's meant to be. The dude's singing I'm talking about. It's like... Am I Am I a hipster? Am I 80s barbershop quartet? That <laughs> needs the bandana. Oh, look at the shiner on that guy. All right, here we go. Anthems are done and dusted. Which version of the Haka is it going to be? Stay traditional, I say. Stay traditional. I've always sort of said... Um, because, oh, hang on, let's see, let's see. Oh, what are they, what are they doing? Uh, 
Aaron Smith is leading us in a rendition of... Oh, we still don't know. Yes, tradition. Tradition. I'll drink to that. Oh, they marched forward to the halfway line. You know what? I say bollocks to all of this. Keep the barrier away. Let them march forward if they want. Although I suppose if they marched too far forward, Nick White would take a dive and try and win a penalty before the game even started. So probably not a good idea. All right, let's go. Thursday night, Bledisloe. <laughs> Rico is fired up. Let's go. Oh, I'm so pumped up. I'm so excited. You know, obviously, we're following the NRL season here on Wasted World of Sports. But this is what it's all about for me. You know, big time rugby union supporter. Rugby championship. Nah, you know, Bledisloe Cup. Yeah, I feel like I've just turned myself into a meme. Rugby championship. Oh, thank you very much for the follow there. Eddie, Eddie, is it? Let's go. Bernard Foley back in the team. I can't believe it. Okay, last chance to join the Discord server before the game kicks off. Follow with the gameplay through my eyes. See what I'm seeing over on the Discord. And a messy start here from the Wallabies. And the All Blacks are going to have a chance. Inside Wallabies 22, should they win the line out? Ed Vogel, ahoy there, mate. Straight through the hands at the start of the game. And that's not how Holloway would have liked to have started this contest. A lot of smoke indeed, the viewer. Lots of smoke just lingering around on the paddock from the fireworks and stuff. Sam Whitelock says, look, mate, this is how you catch a line-out ball. In the middle, and now the All Blacks set up a driving mall that's going sideways. No real threat at the moment. And there. Oh, they've got a penalty advantage. That's what they were playing for, sideways or not. It's released and a chip over the top from... Uh, oh, it, I thought it was Richie Moanga who kicked it, but it wasn't. He was there to nearly reclaim the ball. And I tell you what, if it was him that kicked it, it was mighty impressive for him to get over there so fast. Take the three. Take the three. They're not going to take the three. That's the difference between Sam Kane and uh, Kieran Reed and Rich Richie McCaw. That's the difference. Richie McCaw and Kieran Reed would have always taken the three. Three points to nil a minute and a half into the game. Like, that is a psychological blow. Sam Kane breaks off the back of the... back of the lineup. They're a meter out. I mean, seven points would be better, of course, but you've got to get those seven, don't you? Whitelock. Puts the head down. They've got another penalty advantage here. All Blacks looking mighty threatening here early. Oh, he's over the line, but he's held up. And it's going to be a five-meter scrum. Well, actually, it won't be a five-meter scrum. We will come back for the penalty. And I dare say they didn't take the three last time. They won't be taking it this time.
Moanga plugs it into the corner. It's always a risky call, in my opinion. Like, you've got to win. You've got to have a lot of confidence in your line out. And confidence they have. Big Bad Brody comes down with it. And they set up a rolling mall. Ten out from the Wallabies line. Looking for a dream start. The mall is powering. The backs are into it. They're going for the pushover try. And they're over in the corner. Dream start confirmed. Instead of three, they get five. Ed Vogel says Gallen is fighting Hodge and Hannon in a row. Who do you think will win? That's tonight, isn't it? Well, I mean, Hodge just doesn't have a chance. Um, Hannon, I'm not so sure. I, I don't know too much about Ben Hannon, but... Uh... Yeah, well, actually, which fight's on first? <laughs> they... Which fight's on first? That could be very, very crucial. Justin Hodges might be like, um, let Gallon fight the big guy first, and then I'll try and pick up the pieces. Pansy. Uh, oh, hang on. Did we establish if I'm allowed to say Pansy in 2022 or not? I forgot. Sorry. Try confirmed in the corner anyway for the All Blacks. And Richie Moanga from the sideline. Kicking at 84% tonight. Four and a half minutes into the game. A dream, a dream start for New Zealand. Moanga moves in, strikes it perfectly, clips the upright, through it goes though, seven points to nil, five minutes gone, All Blacks, from the kickoff, the mistake by Holloway, straight through his hands, trying to claim the kickoff, and it started all that show of shenanigans. And Whitelock says, look, mate, this is how you do it. That's how you claim a restart. And they bring the ball up now, setting for a clearance. Retallic with the hit up. Just another settler. Now for the clearance. Moanga puts it high. Competitive ball on the halfway line. And it's knocked on by Foley. Oh, Bernard Foley, his first touch of the ball. As a matter of fact, the Wallabies have only had two touches of the ball and they've managed to drop it twice. Kick over looking for Caleb Clark. Oh, and he's thrown it too quickly, the offload. Moanga was not ready for it. And now it's a knock on by the All Blacks. But here we go. Bernard Foley up. Wasn't even close to catching that. And the kick over the top, it wasn't even by Moanga. I think everybody's Moanga tonight, don't I? It was Harvili, and Harvili was not ready for the skill level of Caleb Clark to flick the ball straight back to him before he'd even landed and knocks the ball on. Scrum down. Wallaby's side of halfway still, though. Can they hold on to the ball, or will Bernard Foley drop it as the pass receiver? Will they even get the chance to use it? No, it is a penalty. Um, yes, that sums up my feelings as well, mate. One of the Australian players, they're looking very confused. Uh, it is a scrum penalty. In Australia, the Wallabies, still absolutely no chance to use the ball. I'm far more concerned about the crooked feed. 
what's with the feeds? Like, they remember? <laughs> okay, calm down. I'll calm down. Remember when they used to crack down on the crooked feed into the scrum? Dan Intox remembers. Oh, Geordie Barrett. He's had a haircut and he is about to take the three. That's got to be a shirt. Have I said that during a rugby union stream before? Take the three. Wasted water sports. And then on the back it says, take the three. I feel like we probably have had that conversation once or twice during the rugby. Jordy Barrett just to the left of the post, 40 metres out, moves in, strikes it well. Strikes it well left. And it stays 7-0, missed conversion. I don't understand why uh, Richie Moanga couldn't have taken that shot at goal. It, well, I think that would have been within his range. He just missed the, the shot at goal, so now he's got something to make up for. Geordie Barrett, and that's a good run. Back into Wallaby's territory. It's all Black's ball. And for the first nine minutes of this contest, has quite literally been all New Zealand. This time, the Wallabies hold onto the ball from the kick, but the return kick from Kellaway is terrible. Straight down the gullet of Geordie Barrett. And New Zealand keeping the ball alive now. They've created space down the blind side, Caleb Clark, and they're back in Wallaby territory. And this could get very messy very quickly if the Wallabies do not clean things up here. Diving over the wrong side of the ruck there, James Slipper. The captain, what are you doing, mate? Here's another chance to take the three. Take the three. It's right in front. 35 out. Eel fries. Ahoy. How are you there, mate? Are you excited for the, for the weekend of NRL finals? Got the Eels against the Green Goblins. Oh, look. Richie Moanga is stepping up to take the kick this time. A whole five meters difference. See, seriously, he would have had the range on the last kick. He's now 35 out, right in front, pretty much smack bang in front of the post. Oh, that's right, you're going to the game. You know, it's going to be quite a monumental occasion. It is very rare, as we all know, anyone who's joined me for NRL live streams knows that I'm not a huge fan of the Parramatta Eels, but by God will I be a Parramatta Eels fan against the Green Goblins. I can't tell you how much I will be cheering for the Eels in that game. Richie Moanga, just with enough distance on the penalty goal, and it is 10 points to nil. All Blacks over Australia in Bledisloe 1. Bolly kicks deep into the 22, taken easily by Havili. Oh, sorry, what, what, why am I drinking? <laughs> why am I drinking? I did it anyway. <laughs> Wasted world of sports. We don't even question it. We just drink. Oh, now there's another t shirt. Might need to shorten it a little bit. Wasted world of sports. Don't question, just drink. Oh, I'm a marketing genius. Arcade Angel, ahoy. Now the Wallabies have got the ball for the first time. 
and they've held on to it. But Jake Gordon, what was he thinking? Trying to run out of half, halfback, <clears throat> scrum half, whatever. I'll get the right sport eventually. We watch too many sports. Solid defense there from the All Blacks. Rico Iwani is fired up and holding on here. How, how long does it take for that penalty to be called? I mean, did he literally have to rip his arms straight out of the sockets to win that penalty? Will Jordan was all over that ball for a very long time before the penalty was finally called and Australia turn it over again. After only a couple of phases... Arvili coming off the field. HIA, I, sp I suppose. Here we go. Yeah. Oh, yes. Head clash. Friendly fire. Sam Kane has just KO'd David Harvey. <laughs> oh, look at him go flying backwards. And then for good measure, he doesn't just get smacked in the face by his teammate's head, but he flings backwards and then smacks the back of his head into the ground, and I dare say that could be the last we see of David Harvili tonight. And I've got to be honest, as an All Black supporter, that could be the best result possible for the team. Uh, I'm not really rating him very highly at all at the moment. But, but, I used to say the same thing about Martin Nonu. It took Martin Nonu... Uh, quite a couple of seasons to really grow into his role, and then he turned into one of the best inside centres in the history of the game. So maybe Havili just needs some time. Richie Moango with the fantastic footwork, skipping around Wallaby defenders at will, but then he tries the offload to Big Bad Brody Retallick, and Big Bad Brody had a big bad mistake and drops the ball cold. Relief for the Wallabies. The clearance up towards the halfway line. But we are still inside Wallaby territory. And it is still All Blacks ball with the throw into the line out. Takiyoho, the Japanese side dish. Oh, and now more space. Caleb, Cro uh, Caleb Clark goes straight up the middle. And Samu is there to pinch the ball. And it's a kick into open space. Jordy Barrett's back. Doesn't kick. He decides to take on the line and reset the ball. They're going to keep it through hand, though. Will Jordan? Oh, no, that's not Will Jordan. That's, um, uh, I can't pronounce his name. Now, that's Will Jordan. And that is a thumping kick up. Outside the 22, I thought he got a little bit more distance than that. Be interesting to see some stats here in this game. Possession at the moment. Possession is 84% in favor of the All Blacks. 16 minutes gone, just about, and it is 84% possession in favor of New Zealand. They are dictating this contest in every facet right now. Heel Fryers is going to watch the Paul Gallon fight. Honestly, I would have done the same were it not for, obviously, the uh, Bledisloe Cup being on. I quite honestly would have done the same. I want to see Hodges get knocked out. I don't care who it's by. I don't care if it's Gallon or bloody Joe Bloggs down the road. I just want to see Hodges get knocked out. Alrighty, time back on.
16 minutes gone, 10-0. New Zealand Wallabies with the throw into the line out. About 30 out from the All Blacks line. Can they win the line out? That, well, not like that. Oh, well, it's gone straight over the top. And they come down with it. Breaking through. Dummies to Foley. Foley still gets wiped out. Advantage here to Australia. They've got numbers galore to the left, but they do another settling phase play. Corin Betting loses the ball in possession to Jordy Barrett. And it'll be a penalty in front of the posts. Will they take the three? It is a gift. Three points. It is an absolute gift three-pointer if they want it. I would, in all honesty, but then I always take the three. I would take the three here, though. Think about it. Ten points to three on the back of 84% possession against you. They are taking the three. I'll drink to that. No, because I'm serious. I would have taken the three as well. Ten points to three after 17 and a half minutes on the back of 84% possession against you. And everybody's looking up at that scoreboard and seeing there's only a converted try difference. That is a big psychological... not a Well, not really a blow, but... I mean, it's just a little bit of scoreboard pressure. Anything, anything can happen. Bernard Foley kicks the goal. That's his first points for the Wallabies since 2019. Probably because it's his first game since then. But that doesn't change the fact. <laughs> 10 points to three, 18 minutes gone, and this game suddenly has a different complexion about it. There is now some scoreboard pressure. Wow, hang on. Sorry, sounded like someone was being murdered. Out in the street, blood curdling screams. <sighs> All right, and look at that on the back of taking the three. Wallabies are back down now in New Zealand territory. Another line out, 25 out from the line. It's amazing what just a little bit of, a little bit of, uh, just a little bit of presence on the scoreboard. And suddenly this game's just got a little bit of a different feeling about it. 19 minutes in. One out of the ruck is probably not going to do the job, though. The pick and go is right there. Sam Whitelock's over the ball. He can't quite get there. Caleb Hale, ahoy, mate. Brody's off his feet now. He needs to stay out of it. Still Wallaby ball. 15 out from the line, right in front of the posts. Looking to level this game up. They go out wide to the left. Back to the right-hand side. Philip takes them on. They're not really threatening the line. Here they go now, threatening the line. Out wide to the right. Kellaway scores the try in the corner.
We need to have a look at the replay. He seems confident, but he wouldn't be the first player to tell Porky Pies about grounding the ball. Out of absolutely nowhere. Kellaway. Yeah, yes, he grounds the ball. Oh. Well, he hasn't grounded the ball. Well, there you go. He has not grounded the ball. What a covering tackle. What an amazing cover tackle. He actually has not got that ball down. Is that Rico Ioani? Rico Ioani has been so fired up. Look at that. He doesn't get the ball down. And then he gets punched in the face. Richie Moanga coming across in cover. Justin Ranger, ahoy, mate. That is the telling angle. Try saving defense. Rico Yuani, take a bow, sir. Amazing. Wow. No try. 10 points to three. It remains. Goal line dropout. New Zealand. Barrett gets us back underway. A m sort of mid-length. Who the? <laughs> oh, and now an error. Was that Bernard Foley? Of course it was. Bernard Foley drops the ball, taking it to the line. Welcome back to rugby championship level of the sport, Bernard. You were shit then, and you're pretty shit now. He's just dropped a cold. Just drop the ball completely and utterly cold. <sighs> Scrum down, New Zealand. Crooked as all hell, scrum feed. Then now the scrum wheels. We're going to reset and reload and go again. Okay, and in the least the least surprising news that you will hear all night long, Harvili has failed his HIA and will not be back. I mean, that was like a double whammer for him. Uh, for him. He got smacked in the face by Sam Kane's forehead. And then he... Uh, Sam Kane's off as well. Sam Kane is off. Presumably for a HIA himself. Dalton Papalihi is on. So who's come on for Harvili? I missed I missed who came on for Harvili. 
and that is a big scrum from the Wallabies. And they've won themselves a penalty. Take the three. Oh, gushy now, blood. Alatoa. Bleeding out of the ears after that big, big scrum. That's why you wear headbands, mate. Protect your ears. Getting in amongst all that rough stuff. But they've won the penalty. Take the three. No, they've plugged it into the corner. They want more than the three. So watch them bugger up this line out. Oh, well, it's a penalty in the line out. But not, not keeping the gap. And they're going to go straight into the corner again. If Bernard Foley can find touch. Which he does. 10 metres out. Line out throw. Wallabies. The throw in is taken. All Blacks don't compete. They stay and wait to attack the driving more. But momentum here. Wallabies and it falls short. But it will be advantage for collapsing. And this time it's a try. This time it's a try off the back of the rolling mall. Valentini is over. Oh, he just got it down. I'll tell you what, that ball nearly bobbled out. But it is a try. Valentini. 10-8 kick to come. Oh, and we've got a yellow card. Papalihu, who has just come onto the field, has been yellow carded. It's almost like he got out there and went, no thanks. I'd rather sit down. <laughs> back he went while he moves in strikes it well and it is 10 points all and uh, stats should be evened up a little bit actually it is possession in favour of the Wallabies 51% territory still in favour of New Zealand slightly. But things have really started to balance out the last 10 minutes. And again, a mistake from the kickoff gives gift, possession, and territory to the All Blacks. Not what you want straight after points. They go wide to the left by um, Jordy Barrett. Taking it forward. They've held him up. He needs to get down to ground, and he's lost it. Caught on the wrong side here, though, the Wallabies, and this should be a penalty. Oh, it's not a penalty. It's going to be a scrum down. Whoa, and it's going to be a Wallaby scrum for some reason. Just a little, uh, that's a little bit of an imbalance in the rules there. When the ball's unplayable, the team going forward in the ruck wins the scrum. But to be fair, <laughs> to be fair, Geordie Barrett more sort of fell backwards after he'd already made about 10 meters. He fell backwards too. Um, but, you know, look, two. <laughs> The way that the, the way that that rule is described, uh, it was a, a fair scrum to the Wallabies. It's just hard to suggest that the All Blacks were going backwards when they just made ten meters. 
Um, all right, let's have a look. Let's have a look at the squad leaderboard. While the scrum packs down. Here's a break now. The Wallabies have gone straight through the middle. Somehow that ball popped out of there. They're keeping it alive now to the left. Foley has kicked for some reason. And Corin Betty's just lined up Caleb Clark. And in typical Corin Betty style, not a single hint of arms in the tackle. But uh, I don't know. There's just something about Corin Betty's technique. He seems to get away with those no arms tackles. Not that I think it should be a penalty, but, uh, you know, if we are doing things to the letter of the law, big counter-rucking here from the Wallabies. There's pressure now on the All Blacks. And Geordie Barrett can only clear up to the, not even to the 22-meter line. And this game is well and truly swung. They get up and they compete the line out of the All Blacks and it falls for them. It's tapped away there. Scott Barrett, I think it was, of all people who got up there. And now Aaron Smith says, I'll do this on my own. Box kick out of scrum half. Doesn't find touch. It finds Corin Betty. Corin Betty. He's fending people off, but oh, he's not fending off. Takiyaho, the Japanese side dish. Not a chance. And uh, whilst he was fending people... Oh, and a cold drop ball there. Who was that? Hang your head in shame. It was Tom Wright. Tim Horan is still orgasming over the run from Corin Betty. I don't know why. Yes, he shrugged three guys off, but he also ran 30 metres across field and went zero metres forward in the process. It's all good and well to, to, to fend guys off, but you kind of need to go forward in the process for it to be a good run, in my humble opinion. It's like, yes, great. You just... You powered your way through half the team. It's just a shame that you went 50 metres across field. I'd rather you beat one defender and go 30 metres upfield. Just me. All right, stoppage in play. I'll have a quick break. And scrum is down and fed. Big scrum from the Wallabies again. Massive scrum. And they win themselves another penalty. And surely you take the three now. Surely. And this is very embarrassing now. Very embarrassing for the All Blacks. Scrum domination by the Powder Puff Wallabies forward pack. <laughs> I 
anywhere in world rugby, if you get dominated in the forwards by the Wallabies, you've got some serious issues. But they don't take the three. They go to the corner and go for the line out. I would have put the scrum down in all honesty. Don't really under uh, yeah, don't understand why they didn't do that. Anyway. They've still got the ball here. Wallabies five out from the line. Phase three ball. Going nowhere fast though with the pick and go. And again, they're actually going backwards. They need to spread it wide is what they need to do. The one-out stuff is not working. But they keep on trying it. Now they free it up out to the left. Short ball. Pokes his nose through. Can't quite get to the line. But they've got them stretched out to the left. They don't... Oh, they don't go again. They had them absolutely skinned out to the left. They still do. Look at the numbers out wide. Corin Betty. Oh, he doesn't have a pass in him, Corin Betty. There's his drawback. And for the past three phases, Australia have had about 17 on one out to the left. And they've just not thrown the ball out. Chance for the overlap is gone. And now, oh, and now a very loose ball from scrum half there, Jake Gordon. And they reset now. Still in the exact same spot. Alatoa with a good punch forward. Look at that. Tom Wright is just screaming for the ball. And a penalty won by the All Black. Tom Wright was standing out there on the wing with his hand up, screaming for the footy because he had nobody in front of him. And again, they went one out. How to butcher a try, in, how to butcher multiple tries in four or five phases with the Australia Wallabies there. Jeez. Ten points are all that remains, but good, good lord, it shouldn't be. <laughs> it really shouldn't be. Australia just bollocked up about three or four try scoring opportunities in that little stanza, and that's the sort of thing that could come back to hurt, because we're approaching the period of time where the All Blacks threaten and break games wide open. And speaking of it, here goes Caleb Clark inside the 22. Still going. Taking the ground. 15 out from the line. Oh, and that's a penalty. And that's got to be 10 in the sin bin. That is a clear professional foul. And you, sir, are going and having a sit down. Oh, and Caleb Clark's busted. Tom Wright is going to have a spell just to make his night even worse because he was calling for the ball. With the clear overlap. There he goes. Tom Wright, 10 in the bin for the most blatant of professional fouls that you will ever see. But I didn't even get a chance to rattle off my... I was about to launch into a, a thing of um, how that could be a huge turning point and they'll really regret not getting those points because this is the period of time the All Blacks break games wide open. And just as I was about to launch into that tirade, Caleb Clark bursts straight up the middle of the defense. And suddenly, they're, they're going to take the three here. I reckon the All Blacks take the three. Sam Kane has failed his HIA. Sam Kane has failed his HIA.
So, Sam Kane is out of the game, as well as David Harvelli. And we're now looking at a... If this has got to be a red card. Contact to the head. All right. Tupaya goes in to form the ruck, and Swain shoulder to the back of the neck to a prone man. And that that is a, at least a yellow. Oh, jeez, that's got to be a broken knee. Oh, oh, that's nasty. Oh, that's even worse than I first thought. Oh, yo, yo, that's a red. That is an immediate red, I'm sorry. I mean, that is an attempt to take someone out of the game. Oh, it's a yellow. Oh, that's very lucky. They can boo all they want, but they should be cheering the fact that that wasn't just a straight red. I mean, that could take... Oh, that's nasty. Look at that. That could have taken Tupaya out of the game for months. Potentially a season. That should be a red. They can boo all they want in the crowd, but they should be cheering. That that was only a yellow. That was extremely lucky to only be a yellow. They didn't take the three. I would have taken the three. But anyways, the rolling mall is set. Oh, the rolling mall is well and truly set. And everybody's favorite Japanese side dish is over. Oh, one field decision, knock on. Because it is a knock on. He's ripped the ball out. I wouldn't say I wouldn't say it's knock on, I'd say it's been stripped out. Oh, Paul Gallon won. Which fight? Which one? Hodges? By knockout? I hope. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, so the Hennant fight was first? I had a feeling that that cheeky, that cheeky little bugger Hodges would try and get the second fight. So that he didn't have to 
go against um, Gal Fresh. <laughs> anyway, the dropout. Caleb Clark takes them on. Nelly breaks through. Should have taken the three. But now Moonga has created space. Cut out ball. Rico Ioani keeps it alive. Aaron Smith knocks it on. Should have taken the three. Oh, who have we got hobbling off here? There's an all-black being essentially carried off the field. Scrum down, 22 metres out from their own line here on the right-hand touchline. On attack, Wallabies. Gordon feeds about as crooked as you can possibly get. Big push here, All Blacks. Knock on at the back of the scrum by Gordon. It's advantage. All Blacks, numbers to the right. Oh, and Bowden Barrett is on the field and has just dropped it cold. And advantage for the knock-on is over. And somehow Australia survived that. Look at this. They had them absolutely skinned out here. Sydney, all in. Ahoy there. Welcome. All Blacks on top. Oh, jeez. I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily go that far. Rico Ioani needed to keep it through the hands there a little bit more. Draw and pass. Draw and pass. A minute until half time. That's the the All Blacks have had their moments. You know, the All Blacks are usually that's not straight in the slightest, but they've got away with that, the Wallabies. <laughs> that was one of the most crooked short throws into a line out I've ever seen. But the but the All Blacks, they, they usually make teams pay you right before half time, and they've had two opportunities now that they've buggered. And we will be going into half time 10 points all. And that alone has got to be a win for the Wallabies. What a massive scrum here. We're just looking at the replay. Massive scrum from All Blacks. Oh, they had them absolutely skinned. Yuani to Barrett. Barrett just drops a cold. We've got another scrum down here. Wallabies will just be looking to get us into half time.
Uh, Heel fries. You can you can ask her yourself. Coincidentally, it's almost like she heard her name. It's almost like her ears pricked up electronically. That was weird. That was so weird. Half time, 10 points all. Hmm. It's hard to know, really, because the Wallabies are winning the territory and possession battle. But you get the feeling that the All Blacks had the best opportunities and they didn't take advantage of them. Wallabies have buggered one up themselves, of course. But it's really hard to say who should be the happiest of the two teams right at the moment. It feels like the Wallabies would probably be the slightly happier of the two teams going into the break just because of the way that the the game started. But when you actually look at the stats, Wallabies, 54% possession, 55% territory, probably should be slightly ahead. Oh, Martin Nodu. Interesting that he would be there tonight after what we were talking about. <laughs> oh, Darcy Swain is so, so lucky that he will be coming back onto the field in the second half. He should have been having a sit down. He will be having a sit down and uh, the opportunity to have a think about what he's done. Oh, I could have broken his. He could have broken his leg. Could have been out for. Could have been out for at least twelve months. An injury like that, like a, think about that, a clean break. A clean break in essentially the shin. That's not healing quickly. <laughs> you know, that's probably that's probably his World Cup dream over. And this bloke gets a yellow card. Crazy. So yeah, both teams have have messed up try scoring opportunities. It's so very interesting to to really know. Uh no, I don't think it's broken. No, I think uh I think he was very lucky to avoid injury. <clears throat> yes, yes, let's talk about that from Marika Kurumbede. Uh the guy doesn't like to try and wrap his arms around, does he? He gets away with it. He does he does just enough to get away with it, but there was absolutely no attempt, in my opinion, to wrap the arms around in that tackle. Oh, now he's wiping blood on his shirt. Ah. Oh. Class act there, Marika. Class act. Good lord. Oh. I've got blood on my hand. Let me just wipe that off. Let me just wipe that off, shall I? On my jersey. My shoulder that I tackle with. Mm. Uh, Who's your caddy says, uh, my bet of wallabies by three looks not too bad at the moment. But still, long way to go yet. 
Oh, please, all players do that on their jerseys. Okay, first of all, Michelle, you don't even follow this sport, so you don't get an opinion. And secondly, they're in the goddamn changing sheds at half time for fuck's sake. You can't find a towel. I can forgive you if you're out on the field, but if you're sitting in the changing rooms, come on. Come on. <laughs> they are literally sitting in the changing rooms at half time. And he's just like, oh. Great big galoot. Him, not you, by the way. <laughs> um How long is half time? Good question. Kavi Bar says F the N Z Quality input. Yes. Nothing beats some quality input into the chat room. <laughs> All right. Uh, I've got to have a quick break before they come back out for the second half. So um, let's bring up the leaderboard. Yeah, let's have a look at the, let's have a look at the wasted world of sports squad leaderboard. Andrew O'Grady has spent 10.25 hours of his life hanging out with us idiots. Mr. Ed's dead. Not too far behind him. Biggie Shack. Biggie Shack there in third place. Dustin Fisher rounding out the top four. I said earlier, Michelle, Dustin Fisher is like, great. So we've got cow. We've got Cowboys in the top four on this ladder as well. Ugh. Terrible. Uh, Carvey Bar says, you suck. Oh, he just gets better and better. Wow. How long did it take you to think that one up, Carvey Bar? Just out of curiosity. You know, I've been streaming in... Uh, I've been streaming for uh, about six years on a variety of different channels. And, um, yeah, <laughs> you suck just has such little effect on me anymore. <laughs> oh, you weren't talking to me. Okay, fair enough. I mean, it's still a terrible insult either way, whether you're talking to me or not, uh, you know, come on, be better. Be better. Especially if you're talking to me. You've got to do better than that. One of my favorite insults that I've ever received, actually, was um, during an Intoxigamer stream. Uh, and I've, al I've always remembered it. See, if people come into the chat room and they're just like, you suck. I've, I've forgotten about you by the time the night's over. I'm never going to remember your name, but this one... <laughs> This one insult in particular, I'll always remember because it was just so funny. So somebody's come into the stream and just been like, you suck. I've gone, mate, look, I've heard it all. You're going to have to do better than that. Well, I asked for it. He did better than that. <laughs> so he, go, he goes, this guy, this guy's so fat. He looks like he drinks pizza sauce from the jar. <laughs> <laughs> and I've read it and I've gone, mate. Now that is what we ask for. Now when you when you go to a live stream and troll, that's the sort of shit you should be coming out with. That's hilarious. <laughs> anyway, um all right, break. A break for half time. A break for half time. Uh, Jamin Van Zeel, everyone watching New Zealand and Oz competing. In comes the box. Taking the cup away. All right. Quick break. Second half coming up. 
Wasted World of Sports. Players low one, 10 points all at half time, really unexpectedly. Let's go. Are you sure the halftime break is only 10 minutes? I feel like it's already been 10 minutes. Either that or that was just an insanely quick trip to the urinal. Um, how do we achieve leaderboard stuff? You're on the leaderboard. Oops. Okay, that was the wrong screen. Okay, Farsi is on the leaderboard. Asking how we achieve leaderboard stat. Complex, basic, ahoy! Welcome along, mate. But there, yeah, there you are, Farsi. Where are you? There you are, Farsi. Where are you? Um, okay. One, two, three, four, five, sixth. Down there in sixth spot. You're still in the top eight. No, no. I know you're there, Farsi. I meant on the leaderboard. Where is your appearance on the leaderboard? My thoughts on the lower limb foul play. I tell you what, I said it at the time. And I will say, say it again now. The crowd erupted in a chorus of boos, but they should have been cheering because that is a pretty blatant and straight red card, in my opinion. That should have been no questions asked, straight red, off you go. Because the punishment can't be based around the injury just because he didn't break his shin doesn't mean that he couldn't have in actuality i would say that he's very lucky if he walks away from that game with no injury to the lower leg at all it's watching it on the replay it's like no a rugby player's body should not contort in that direction it was an absolute straight red card. The crowd erupted in a chorus of boos when the yellow was shown, but I said at the time, they should be cheering. They should be absolutely cheering right now for the fact that that's not a red because, I mean, poor, the, the poor guy that it happened to, I think it was, um, I think it was Quinn, Quinn Tupea. Could have been out for a year. That could have been his World Cup. That could have been his World Cup dream, done and dusted with a broken leg, like a break, a break there, 
halfway between the ankle and the kneecap is not going to heal quickly. He would have been out for a long, long time. But anyways, should absolutely have been a red card, in my opinion. 10 points all, half time. Second half is ready to rock and roll. <laughs> Sorry, I'm still laughing at the fact Bernard Polly has even been selected. Anyways, my apologies, Carvey. I was, uh, I thought you were talking to me before, but uh, but still, uh. You do need to relax just a little bit. Polly gets us underway. And Sam Whitelock claims the ball. Takiyaho, everybody's favorite Japanese side dish with the settler. Bowden Barrett with the kick out to the corner. Will Jordan takes it and kicks it through again. Does it bounce in field? It does. And it's an awkward bounce at the back for Kellaway. But he manages to get away with it all right. But big counter rack now from the All Blacks. Driving over the top. Walking over the top. It's All Blacks ball. And look at the numbers out to the left. Big bad Brody. Look to your left, mate. It's 17 on one. Oh, he wants his try. Taki Aho. Everybody's favorite Japanese side dish over in the corner. Despite the fact he had about 32 on one out to his left, does not pass the ball. He goes on his own. He says, I messed up in the first half. I'm not messing up this time. Try to the All Blacks. The moments they usually strike right before halftime and right after halftime. Well, they messed up before halftime. And, oh, Jesus Christ. He is so lucky he scored that try. Because, seriously, like, okay... I was exaggerating before when I said 32 on one overlap, but that was a clear five on one overlap to the left. And he doesn't pass that ball. If he doesn't score that try, good Lord. He is very lucky he scored that try. 15 points to 10. to come and that is a dream start to the second half but if you remember correctly the All Blacks got a dream start to the first half as well so can they go on with it this time never say never until the fat lady sings what about a fat man I could start singing and officially draw a close to this contest. Richie Moanga converts. 17 points to 10. All Blacks. <clears throat> Who have we got there on Twitch? Ellie Shot. Eli Shot. 699. Good night. Good night? Or good, it's been a good night or good night I'm going to bed. Through the hands again from the kickoff. Rico Yuani puts his head down. Creates space. Oh, look out. No, he's kicked the ball. Keep it through the hands. But look at the counter ruck again. Aaron Smith throws it out to the left. They've got... <laughs> what have we got? A penalty. Oh, a penalty for high contact. Good Lord. What a start to the second half, though. New Zealand have obviously copped a little bit of a pasting. In the sheds, 
because they have come out a completely brand new side. Oh, jeez, I bet he wishes he had his time over again there. The kick was not the right option. What a start to this second half, though. New Zealand. I understand that they're playing against 13 men and everything, but still, the ease to which they have just... The ease at which they're just traipsing upfield. Farsi says, quite possibly without any intention, New Zealand have our best 15 play. Well, yeah, look, no David Harvili. I'm sorry, I'm just not rating him too highly. No Sam Kane. I'm sorry, I'm just not rating him too highly. <laughs> Like there's there's a couple again. I tell you what, if if Jordy Barrett gets injured now and is a forced replacement, and they go on a win by like seventy points with him off the field, Sam Kane, David Harvey, and Jordy Barrett all off the field, three Ian Foster projects it would be very telling. It would be very very telling. Oh, Australia win the penalty, though. Despite the quick start, take the three. Take the three. And here come players back onto the field now. Australia get their full complement back. It's 15 on 15, and I didn't realize that they got sent off. Oh, yeah, of course, it was the same ruck. Yeah. I was going to say I didn't realize they got sent off so close together, but it was, like, literally the exact same moment, wasn't it? Take the three. Hashtag take the three. They're taking the three. <laughs> Finally. Finally, somebody listen to me. Bernard Foley, what are we, about 30 out? 30 out, just to the left of the uprights on his favourite side here. This should be a gift three-pointer to the Wallabies. Should be. Moves in, strikes. Oh, he's got it through. Over it goes. 17-13. Hmm. Back underway. Oh, they've taken a restart. At last, the Wallabies. Robin Wood, ahoy there, Bok supporter, watching with interest. Who would you prefer wins? As a as a Bok supporter, who would be the, the preference? It'd probably be best for the Springboks if these teams split their split their rubbers, wouldn't it? And much like the first half, the All Blacks start with a hiss and a roar. But now, this is just swinging back in Australia's favour. Bowden Barrett might have to go for a HIA after that. Can you get sent off for a HIA for the ball hitting you in the head? I suppose you're probably good. I mean, if it smacks you in the head hard enough. Sorry. 
Scrum down here. Wallabies feed just on their own side of halfway. Oh, Bowden Barrett's been awful tonight, hasn't he? I've only seen him touch the ball twice, and he's knocked it on twice. Maybe even three times, if that's possible. Well, to be fair, he didn't knock that one on. He it hit his face. <laughs> Bolly with his little pop gun kicks. Look at that. Absolutely no distance at all. Will Jordan. Oh, and that's a knock on by Corabetti right in front of the post. Backwards. 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 Well, anyways, the referee has just been saved from an embarrassing scenario there because Corin Betty's played the ball on the ground and given a penalty away to the orb. Backwards. Backwards. That was called a knock backwards. I can't. I can't believe that. But yes, anyways, the uh, the referee has been saved from a very embarrassing circumstance there. And Corin Betty gives away a penalty. All Blacks throw into the lineup. Fine, Scotty Barrett. And they set up the Rolly Moore. Backwards, that was called. Incredible. What a huge mall here. All Blacks. Towards the line, collapsing by the Wallabies. That will be a penalty advantage. Rico Ioani needs to look out to the left. Again, they've got them skittled. We will come back for the penalty. And, oh, we might have another card here. Oh, we do have another card. We do have another card coming up here. It will be yellow. And it will be Jake Gordon doing 10 minutes in the sin bin. Number nine, collapsing the mall. <laughs> I don't know. Get him to turn around and look at his back. The referee's like, you're the number nine? It's like, gee, God, mate, just get him to do a little twirl or something. Well, there he is. There he is. Number nine, Jake Gordon... He just wasn't strong enough to. <laughs> he wasn't strong. He just fell over. To be fair, but I mean, look, he got he got in the wrong position. It's that simple. Anyway, they're not taking the three here. They want more. They want more than the three. And uh, our favorite Japanese side dish is going to take the throw into the line out. Listen to that All Blacks chant going up in the stands. Is this a home game for the Wallabies or not? The All Blacks chant rings out around Marvel Stadium. As we get ready for the throw into this line out. Takiyaho finds his mark. In Satutu, they've got the advantage. They spread it wide now. Richie Mawanga says, I will just do it all on my own. Thank you very much. Doesn't even need to go out to the left. He fakes it to the left, steps back inside, takes a couple of wallabies with him over the try line. Twenty-two thirteen kick to come from right beside the posts. The Bledisloe Cup could be. Well, they've got they've got they've got one hand on it, don't they? Maybe not a full hand just yet. There's still plenty of time to go in this one. But maybe 
Maybe they've just got a couple of fingers wrapped around the Bledisloe Cup for the 21st year in a row here, the All Blacks. 21 years in a row. Moanga converts 24 points to 13. Uh, you get what do you you get a bonus point for three more tries than the opposition. So not quite yet. If they score another try, it'll be bonus points. Uh, Moes Bus, the Wallabies last won the Bledisloe Cup in two thousand and two. Twenty years ago. Bolly gets us back underway. Straight down the gullet of Richie Mawanga, who clears it with interest up over the halfway line. Great, great clearance. Ian Foster still doesn't look happy because I think he knows that uh, even this is not going to please us. <laughs> Wallabies win the line-out ball. Valentini takes it up over the halfway line. Nick White's on the field, so of course... The first touch that Nick White gets, he does a box kick, a traditional Nick White box kick, and gives possession straight back to the opposition in typical Nick White style. Bowden Barrett, oh, he's not having a good night. That is straight off the side of the boot. Oh, Jordy Barrett's been taken out here by Corin Betty. It's been cleared. It's been cleared. It's been cleared by the on-field official, but I dare say that might get looked at in further detail. Okay, and it has been. It has been called. It was cleared by the on-field official, but the bunker was straight in his ear to say, yeah, mate, that wasn't so clear-cut. Button Barrett, the chip over for Will Jordan, who takes it, steps around the fullback, beats another one. Will Jordan under the post. Easy as you like. Oh. Bowden Barrett with the kick through for Will Jordan. Was he onside? Is probably all we need to look at here. Was he onside? Yes, he was. Takes it on the full, steps around Kellaway. And then he's just got too much pace. Will Jordan. Wallaby's defense nowhere to be found. 29 13, kick to come. Whoa, 20 years of Bledisloe misery is about to become 21. Conversion successful. 31 points to 13. All Blacks starting to see some reward for that early domination that they had. They haven't had any domination lately. But that early domination that they saw. <laughs> Bonus point now for the All Blacks. Changing it up, going the short kickoff. It's taken Sam Whitelock. No issue whatsoever. Uh, 
Takiaho takes it into the ruck. And Wallabies have won a scrum here. He was very quick to play. All Blacks could have a man off here, in all honesty. There was some shenanigans that went on in back play. There were some shenanigans in back play. And uh, this could be a game-changing moment. There was a clean out off the ball, away from the ruck. And I wouldn't be at all surprised if we see another yellow card. Forget about Sinbin Sunday in the NRL on the weekend. <laughs> Forget about Sin Bin Sunday. We've got yellow card. Yellow card Thursday. Doesn't quite work, does it? Um, all right. I'll be right back. That will definitely be a yellow card. Oh, wow. Penalty only. I thought, I thought for sure that was a yellow card. But anyway, just a penalty. Uh, you know, look, it is what it is. No hint of the three here for the Wallabies. They need more than more than three port uh, more than three pointers now. They need tries and plenty of them. Oh, and it's knocked on from the line out. All black spot. So, no, sorry, Dion. I thought it was going to be a yellow card to uh, to Lomax for the All Blacks, but. Um, but uh, but no, it it was just a penalty, just a penalty. It's a knock on Wallabies from the line out. It's going to be a scrum to the All Blacks. <laughs> That's funny because I call him Lurch. Michelle. Well, I'm assume I can only assume that you're talking about the same player that I'm talking about, him. I've been calling him Big Bad Brody tonight, though. Big Bad Brody. But yes, I did used to call him Lurch. <laughs> Good scrum there. All Blacks retain the ball. Going through the phases. Scott Barrett. Now, Richie Moanga dummies the kick. He's quick, but he's not quick enough. Counter ruck by the Wallabies is good. Puts pressure on. And now Barrett in front of the posts. Where's the clearance kick coming from? It's coming from Geordie Barrett who kicks it out wide to an unmarked Caleb Clark who is in open spaces. Feeds the ball backwards. Knocks it on. And a big, big let off here for the Wallabies. Huge let off.
Wide open spaces for Caleb Clark. Tries to lay the ball back. Uh, tries to lay the ball back. And it dribbles forward. Scrum on halfway to the Wallabies. They survive. And they've got 50 seconds left before they're back to their full complement. Oh, sorry. It wasn't even a scrum. It was a penalty for hands on the ground. There was the knock-on advantage, but then All Blacks infringed. And Bernard Foley pops it into halfway. Not even at the 22. Jeez, he's a terrible kicker. For a, for a supposedly international fly half, he's got a terrible boot on him. I can't understand why he was recalled. I mean, surely there, surely there's some grade players who are better options than Bernard Foley. But anyway, I digress. I digress. Foley steps. There's the offload. Kellaway. Kellaway will score. Twenty minutes to go. Thirty-one eighteen. Assuming this conversion is successful, it is still well and truly game on here, mathematically. Oh, there's a pulse, and Bernard Foley is the defibrillator. Bernard Foley's the goddamn nothing, is what Bernard Foley is. <laughs> Bernard Foley knew his pass was forward. That's why. He, that's why he kicked that conversion so quickly. Dane Coles is on for the All Blacks. Everybody's favorite Japanese side dish, Takiyaho. Is, has, he's going to have a sit down after what has been overall a very solid night. And now the All Blacks restart is out on the fall. And this game has got a little bit of a pulse for the last 20 minutes. What the hell was that? I think that was the I think that was the strings of the spider cam on the roof that just got into the hard camera shot there. That was weird. Thirty one points to twenty. Um I'll tell you what, my prediction of the all blacks by around twelve ish is looking pretty good. That was my call at the start of the stream. All Blacks by roughly 12. Big scrum here, All Blacks, but it's called a it's called, well, it's called a free kick originally, but now it's upgraded to a penalty for some reason. I've never seen that happen before. It's like free kick, no wait, I've changed my mind. That's a full penalty. Foley, the pop gun, finds touch. Just shy of the All Blacks 22.
Playing uh, the throw into the line out. Oh, it's a little crooked. It's a little deep. But they've managed to get an advantage over a, a crooked, almost overthrown line out. Has somehow ended up advantage Wallabies. Corin Betty with the cutout ball. It's shut down, though. No advantage to be taken. Penalty advantage, Australia from the line out. Inside ball, Valentini. Plays it backwards. A dummy from Holloway. Probably wishes he passed it. That will scrub everything out. And we will come back for the penalty. Sixty-five twenty gone. Thirty-one points to twenty in favor of the All Blacks. Foley's gonna pop this into the corner. I would have taken the three. Personally, I would have taken the three, but you know, I've been saying that all night. I've been saying that all rugby championship. And it seems like taking the three has gone out of style. But anyways, uh, Fayanga cannot mess this up. This is a crucial throw into the line-out. <laughs> They've sacrificed the three points. He finds his target. The All Blacks don't compete. They instead try to combat the mall, and they are doing so. They are doing so at the moment. Oh, they've created space now. Kellaway looking for another. Goes on his own, and he might have scored. Kellaway might be over again. And this brings the Wallabies within bonus point range. Numbers everywhere there for the Wallabies. Now it's a close game. Now it's got a pulse. DJ Flexer. Ahoy there, mate. Gordon Shumway. Elf. Who's Elf? Who's Elf? Bernard Foley, big kick here. A successful conversion brings them within a try. An unconverted try. Moves in, strikes it well. Puts it straight down the middle. 31-27, and that is scoreboard pressure right there. 13 minutes to go. Moa, can he keep it in the field of play? This time he can. That's a better restart. Will Jordan with the pressure on Corin Betty. Bernard Foley with the clearing kick. <laughs> should never take the three. Take the five. Take the five, potentially seven. The trouble is how rarely it actually works out that you get the five or the seven, isn't it? It's a big risk, but it is, of course, a big reward as well. What's with this camera angle? Can we have a no there? Thank you. Normal camera angle.
<laughs> Robin Wood says, just when Foster was starting to have a good night's sleep. Yes. Take the three. Take the three. It's right in front. It's a gift three-pointer. Take the three. Sam Whitelock. <laughs> Sam Whitelock is taking the three. The uh, the commentators are obviously watching a different game than I am. I mean, chat room. Correct me if I'm wrong here, but the uh, the the commentators are basically orgasming over Bernard Foley. Um, are we are we watching a different game? Commentators right now are absolutely blowing their load over Bernard Foley, but I don't think he's done anything. Andrew Kellaway has been the standout for the Wallabies tonight. <laughs> Mawanga moves in, strikes it. It's straight over the back dots. And the All Blacks restore a converted try margin with nine minutes to go. Oh, they're literally throwing babies in the air in the stands, the All Black supporters. And such is the excitement of that lead being restored. Bernard Folly gets us underway again. What a majestic kickoff that must be for the commentators on the game. <laughs> Moanga. Counter ruck here by New Zealand's good, but Wallabies managed to hold on to it, and they're in all black territory still. Oh, yeah. I probably can't say that, Farsi. You're probably absolutely right. Here's Pete Samu. He's away. He's got Corin Betty inside. And that's about as forward as it gets in the pass back to Pete Samu. But it looks like it's been awarded. And I tell you what, that decision to take the three is looking pretty good right about now. Samu to Corin Betty. About as far forward as you can possibly pass a ball, Corin Betty. And I feel like Bernard Foley needs to get this kick away very, very quickly. Or well, this one's going to get looked at. He popped the kick away as quick as possible last time so that it couldn't get looked at. But I don't think he can get the kick away too fast this time. Okay, well, apparently we're not going to have a look at that one. Interesting. Fair enough. Bernard Foley now with an opportunity to equalize this game. Moves in, strikes. Oh, that's going to Oh, that's going to have them exploding in the commentary box. 34 points all. Oh, 
Oh, they are spoofing all over their own faces in the commentary box over Bernard Foley. Six out of six is not that impressive in rugby union, Michelle. I understand that you're uh, not a not a follower, but um, you expect you expect rugby union. I mean, they they practice kicking more than NRL players. Is basically what I'm saying. You expect a kicker to have a 99% success rate or thereabouts. So it's actually not that impressive. I mean, that's it. That is literally his job. It's like an NFL. It's like in the NFL, you know, that you've got that specific guy to kick goals. You don't expect them to miss. Same in rugby union. You don't expect your fly halves to miss goals. It's not what they're paid for. It is All Blacks ball. Finlay Christie's on the field. Wallabies have won a penalty. Valentini wins the penalty. Surely they take the three. Surely they take the shot of the three here. And Wallabies by three would suddenly be looking very good there. Who's your caddy? <laughs> They're taking the three. And it's Nick White with the kick out of Bird of Folly's range. Of course, Bernard Foley cannot kick that far, so he will not be taking this shot at goal. Bernard Foley's only got a, got about a uh, 20 or 30 metre range on him, so Nick White steps up. From right in front, Nick White moves in, strikes. It's dead centre. He's got enough on it indeed. Wallabies 37, All Blacks 34. Three minutes to go. Mawanga goes deep. Corin Betty, what can he do to throw this game away? <laughs> There's the penalty, and here comes another shot at the three. Or oh, do they change this up? Do they plug this into the corner and go for the win? They're plugging it into the... Take the three, you great big goofs. Oh, what a huge call. They have plugged this into the corner. The All Blacks have said, we are not doing this through the three-pointers. We want a try. The g hashtag go for the seven. Dane Coles, the pressure is on. Throw into the line out, hits his target. Scott Barrett takes it, but they're driving through here. The Wallabies. It's a penalty to the Wallabies. All or nothing, and they come away with nothing, but it's not game over yet. I think that was a horrible decision. <laughs> I think that was a horrible decision to go for the uh, to go for the corner. I mean, take the three. Well, the ball's gone to ground. That was the problem there. The ball went to went to ground. Wallabies all over the top of it. 
you take the three. You take the three in that scenario. Whoa! Hang on! Hold up! Hold up! Hold up! What's just happened? What's just happened? What has just happened? Time waste. Time wasting. Scrum to the All Blacks. Bernard Foley has taken too long to take the restart. Bernard Foley has taken too long to take the restart. Look, he's got his own players screaming at him. His own player behind him was screaming at him to put the ball out. His, uh, his own teammate knew what was going on. Screaming at him to put the ball out. What a huge moment. Scrum down. Right in front of the posts, 20 seconds to go. Nick White is offside by a mile, but he gets away with it. And you just get the feeling the Wallabies are going to infringe here. You just feel like it. There goes the siren a little bit early. Advant penalty advantage to the All Blacks. Will they take the three if this gets blown up? Do they take the three? Dane Coles goes short of the line, but they've got the front foot ball. Momentum. They've got to clear it, though. They've got to clear it, the All Blacks. They've got to get it out of here. Rico Yuani in a scrum half. Moanga puts the ball wide to Will Jordan. Offloads to Jordy Barrett, who scores the try. Bernard Foley has single-handedly lost this game for the Wallabies. What a great call to bring him back into the squad. 39-37. The Bledisloe Cup. Dominance continues. Stolen. On the back of a huge mistake by Bernard Foley. The telling moment of the Bernard Foley scenario was his own teammate in the background screaming at him, waving at him to kick the ball out. Kick the ball. Put it out. For God's sake, kick the ball out. And then when the time was blown, he blew up. He, he knew what was happening. Somebody on the field knew what was happening. That's the key. Somebody knew what was happening. Not Bernard Foley. New Zealand, 39. Australia, 37. Stolen at the death. Twenty one years. All Blacks. Unbelievable scenes here. Oh, wow.
So who'd have thought that Bernard Foley would be the one to cost the Wallabies the game, huh? <laughs> Handed wins. Well, you know, your time waste and that's what happens. Handed wins. The other Wallabies guy knew what was going on behind him. Old mate Bernard Foley didn't. Oh, Sonny Bell Williams now with an interview with our favorite Japanese side dish. Samasoni Takiyaho. Two tries, eight carries. Great performance. Wow. 39, 37, full time All Blacks, 21 years in possession of the Bledders Low Cup. Have you ever seen that a penalty for time wasting? Well, it wasn't a penalty. It was a scrum because time wasting is is always a scrum down to the opposition. But if you watch the replay, if you watch the replay, you see you see the referee blow time back on. There is a Wallabies player behind Bernard Foley screaming at him to kick the ball out. He knew what was going on. Somebody heard the whistle. Somebody knew what was going on. It wasn't Bernard Foley. If nobody reacted, there would be an argument there. But the fact that somebody on the Wallabies team knew what was happening, you've got to play to the whistle. You've got to play to the whistle. Somebody knew, somebody knew what was going on. You can try and make all the excuses in the world for him, but the fact of the matter is Bernard Foley's just not that good. And he has now just cost the Wallabies another game. Another game. Not for the first time. But surely for the last time. Surely. Hey, what a game, though. Fantastic game. It looked like it was going to be a complete and total blowout at one point there. Uh, Ian Foster, he can't relax. No relaxing for Ian Foster, that's for sure. All right, Wasted World of Sports. Thank you very much for joining me for this one. I appreciate it. As always, I'll be back tomorrow for the NRL Finals. Parramatta Eels. The Green Goblins. A historic moment. Quite a historic moment. Because it's very rarely that you will see I'm an Eels supporter. God damn, I'm going to be an Eels supporter tomorrow night. Yes. So, yeah, looking forward to that one.
Green Goblins, they don't even deserve to be in the finals, let alone still alive in the finals. Anyway. All right. Thank you very much. Wasted World of Sports. 21 years. 21 years of All Black Letters Low Cup dominance. Unbelievable scenes. Catch you tomorrow if you follow the NRL. Otherwise, I'll catch you for the next Blitters Low Cup if you're only into the real rugby. Thank you and good night.